Welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. If you want to build a company with an army of ambassadors and raving fans who speak highly of you and refer you willingly, you are in the right place. And now, here is your host, Michael J. Mayer. What's up, everybody? It is another time for Referrals Podcast. I hope I didn't make you jump right off the get the go there, but uh, I know that a lot of you are walking and listening to this. I know a lot of you are on the treadmill or on the bike, and you're listening to this, and I say kudos to you for knocking, uh, kind of knocking out two birds with one stone there. I'm appreciative of that. I love all the messages we're getting. I love that you love the content. But I've got a question for you. If you had a product that you had spent six months, one year, longer, innovating, creating, and just like you spent all this time, energy, effort, money on developing it, how would you tell the world? How would you sell it? Where would you go? How would you get it out there to sell this awesome new product? I've got another question for you. Let's say you had an announcement to make. Let's say something changed with what you do or the people you serve. How would you tell people? How would you get that word out to your former clients or whatever? And is it email? Is that really your solution? Maybe there's a better solution. Here's another one. How are you adding value to your clientele above and beyond the transaction? What are you doing to form your tribe of trust. Today, we're going to dive deep into the tribe of trust, and we're going to talk about how a Facebook group could be the solution for your business. Before I do that, I've got to give a big shout out. Are you kidding me? Referral Mastering Academy, by the way, is filling up very, very quickly. Check it out at referralmasteryacademy.com. We do referrals. We help you master repeat and referral business, customer experience, customer loyalty, all of that so that you never have to cold call, door knock, or talk to a stranger again. You got to love it. Repeat and referral business, Referral Mastery Academy. Check it out. And I've got to give Georgie Hagen, who right now is living on a boat and getting referrals. She lives on a boat and she gets referrals. She said, thank you for being such a great example. We love you guys too. She had a personalized postcard sent out and she ended up with this postcard that we had talked about, she ended up getting a ton of referrals. If you're interested in learning more about that postcard and some of the other things that we did with that is go to joingengen.com. Joingengen.com. You get to join the generosity generation. This is your invitation. If you Go to it and it says, how'd you find out about it? Say, Michael invited me or say the podcast and we'll get you into the generosity generation. That is our tribe of trust. And we welcome you to the generosity generation. We are living in the generosity generation. So speaking of the generosity generation and the tribe of trust, I'm very excited about bringing on today's guest, Carson Porter. Carson was born and raised in Arizona and Southern Utah. His father was an auto mechanic and his mother stayed home raising seven kids, seven kids. I mean, like that's a basketball team with a couple of subs. I'm telling you, most of his childhood was spent watching his parents struggle with money, which spilled over into every other area of life. So at the age of 13, he started his first business changing oil on ATVs and fixing lawnmowers. The vast majority of his adult life has been spent in entrepreneurship, owning and building businesses and working to bring value to the community around him. He started two auto repair businesses and an insurance agency, ended up selling all of those businesses after substantial and quick growth. And now Carson is doing the most fulfilling work he's ever done. He's currently growing growing the largest community of badass insurance agents in the world. He's attracting honest, ethical, productive, and authentic life insurance agents to his movement and changing the industry. Carson Porter, welcome to Referrals Podcast. How you doing, brother? Thanks for having me on, Michael. Appreciate it. Always. Here's what's interesting is we actually met through a Facebook group. Yep, we did. So, so it's like 
no matter what the rest of the time we say in here, whatever we talk about, wherever it goes, whatever value we add from this is, you know what? Facebook group can connect the awesome people within your group. And you know what? I don't even think the person who runs the group that we met in knows that we met and that we're doing this, but he provided value to us by, by providing that Facebook group. And here we are, we're going to talk about providing value through Facebook groups. I, I love it, right? It's, all, it's like this, it's like this uh, multi-level, multi-layered approach to life where connecting others, connecting others, connecting others. So, all right, today we're going to jump into what I would call like your tribe of trust, right? Your, your community and, and things like that. But I have to just start in the very beginning, you know, what made you decide to start up a, a Facebook group for life insurance agents of all people, right? Yeah. So I'm in the insurance space, right? And particularly life insurance, annuities, and other related financial services. It's something I've done well with. I've been very fortunate or blessed or whatever, whatever adjective you want to, you want to throw on there. But um, no, just as I've done that, I've had the opportunity to joint work with a lot of agents made a lot of money doing that. Um, that led into coaching agents, which is is a lot of what I do now. Um, and growing the group, the idea or the thought was, hey, I, I've grown some groups before for the explicit purpose of selling insurance and had a, a lot of success with that. Um, what can I do to grow these agents? Because it's the most fulfilling thing I've ever done when I have somebody, I, I, I get 10, 15 DMs a day from somebody that, hey, you know, my spouse and I, we've been fighting about money because I'm in this business and I, I just can't make it work. And my spouse told me that, you know, she's on the way out the door. I've been listening to what you said. I implemented a few things. And two weeks later, I just got a paycheck for more than I've made in the last six months. And she just told me she'd give me another 90 days to figure this thing out. Dude, <laughs> you saved a marriage, dude. <laughs> it, it hits me so damn deep. I don't know. It just, it connects with me in a way that frankly, selling insurance never has. I'm good at it, but but um, I absolutely love it. So growing the group was a place where the thought is, how can I give um, uninhibited value, be entirely authentic my, to myself and guarantee that I'm always speaking to the right audience? Because if I go post on my Facebook page, I don't know how many friends I have on Facebook at this point, four or 5,000. I think the cap is 5,000. We're getting there. Um, but maybe half of those, I mean, you're going to have your grandma, your sister, your cousin, your uncle, some random guy in the middle East, who's trying to get you to do his cryptocurrency. And that's not my audience. The people who are there to hear my message or who I can impact with that message. Um, they're in that same insurance space. And how do I bring them together and get them to, I like the term used tribe of trust. How do I get them to cooperate and coordinate together with all the value that's there to increase um, everybody exponentially, raise the level of the water in the harbor, so to speak. And that's what a Facebook group is going to do. I love that. I love that. I, I, I have to tell you that there was a part of this that I didn't know. So for everybody that's listening or watching this, uh, what I do before we actually have a podcast is a lot of times I'll have conversations with the guests just to kind of get a feel of how we can bring the most about value to our listeners and how can I make it a biggest win for the guest? You know, I want to know more. The more I know about that before we go in, that the better off it is. But one thing that didn't come up in our pre-conversation was that you, you had a couple of Facebook groups before and were they for consumers to, to sell insurance? Were these life insurance clients or tell me a little bit about that. And then, and then we'll jump forward to the providing massive value to yeah, the life so, insurance agents. So these groups, the, the point of the group was to put me in front of an audience who I knew would need my insurance products. The groups were not insurance groups. Nobody wakes up at night and they're like, oh my God, I want to join an insurance group on Facebook. <laughs> we, we go to Facebook to be entertained, um, educated, and impacted, right? But insurance is certainly not on that list. And so the groups... The premise of the group was a, a different area um, in, in some different things. For example, we did a group on um, like home buyers and real estate investing. People love that content, absolutely love the consumer. And so we built a group around it and had thousands of people pour in, thousands and thousands of people. These were people in. who were looking to buy homes? 
buy homes, sell homes, invest in homes. Well, guess what? Buyers, sellers, and investors are great insurance clients, whether it's home insurance, mortgage protection insurance, or if you're an investor, you've got money to invest. What if I could talk to you about, you know, a nice little arbitrage play on that half a million dollars you're looking to, to park? What if I can pick you up an extra two points per year guaranteed on it just through placement, right? Mm -hmm. And so this was a phenomenal way to get them. Cultivating the group brought them all to one place. And then guess who's number one? The primary person providing value, uh, valuable content that they want to consume. So they keep coming to the group. That's me. And then number two, guess who's one of the only insurance agents and financial advisors in the group? That's me. <laughs> that would right? be you, right? So, um, yeah, I love that. And that 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 goes hand in hand with, with what we've taught forever. It's just one of the things that we love to teach realtors is to create Facebook groups for their local area. And, and, you know, they, they provide value that it's all consumers. Uh, don't let other agents in if you don't want to, right. It's, it's your community, just build your own community and it's the people they know. And then also local people, you know, that are invited from by the other people. And, you know, one of the things that I love about it is when somebody, uh, recommends your group to another, it's almost like a pseudo referral. Uh, within itself, you know, when they're telling other people about your group, they're really kind of like telling other people about you too, you know, so it, it's got that power of attraction to it as well is, is you've got this hub and people are being attracted to it and brought to it by others, which is a beautiful thing. So let's talk about your, your online group. So, so where's it, where's it located? How are you growing it? And who's your ideal member now? Yeah. So at this point, like I say, my focus has shifted a lot more from selling insurance to coaching agents to, to do that. And so our group, it's called winning at insurance sales. It's the at symbol instead of the at word, okay. um, winning at insurance sales. And it's a private group. We make members ask or answer questions to get in. This is a key to growing a good group um, and having good group quality, because I don't want I, I don't just want irrelevant content posted. I don't want spammers in there. I don't want scammers in there. I don't want recruiters in there. I want people to come in and in my space specifically, we're recruited all the time to every come here, leave there. Everyone sucks over there, come over here. And people are sick to death of that. And so one of the things I set out when I set the core values for my group is that this is going to be a safe space for agents who exist in all niches of the industry, not just life insurance, but in all niches to come and get massive value and be able to implement that and improve their position where they're already at. No recruiting, no, no spam. Like I say, it's, it's massive. So your membership questions do a good job of helping filter through that. Not only by the way that people answer those questions, um, or not only by whether they answer those questions or not, but how they answer them. You know, it, it's pretty easy to find uh, when you ask somebody for a piece of information and they answer with, well, I don't need to answer that. Well, then I don't need you in my group. Right. Um, because the people that are coming to our group, they're givers just as they are take as much as they are takers. Right. Because there's accountability to it. That's the beauty of the the filter is that you you filter in the, the sharers and the carers, like I say. Right. We want people who share and care and and the takers will be the ones who say, I don't need to share my content, right? The other thing too that I love about that is there's an element of trust to that, right? So if somebody says, I don't want to give you my email or mobile, then you know what? They don't trust you yet. And and either the person who recommended the group didn't do a great enough job and it's a chance for communication with them, or it's one of those where it's like, you just need to educate the person a little bit more maybe to the point of where they're going to trust you, right? Right. And I love that. I love that. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the filter with questions. And really one of the things that you need to do as you set up your group is to, what are those questions that you ask and how can you make those the biggest win-win and, and like, how do they really filter out the ones you don't want and filter in the ones you want? People are like, well, my group's 140,000. Yeah. You got a bunch of a-holes jerks and, you know, takers in there. Uh, and then people look at my group and it's like 7,200 or 7,500. I don't know what we're at right now, but it's, it's like, you know what? I'll take my 7,500 because right. they're awesome people, you know? Right. And you said earlier that your group isn't humongous, right? You're in the like hundreds up to a thousand with your group versus, you know, the people who chase everyone. 
Yeah, this particular group, it's been growing um, slower than my real estate groups because uh, number one, the market is smaller. The market of people who, for example, are interested in the American dream, mm -hmm. uh, that enter 150 million Americans, right? <laughs> right. The right. number of people who are interested in learning more about how to sell insurance, much, much smaller, yeah. but also need a higher intent on this group as well. Um, so it grows slower. We've opened it up about six months ago, and we're off. We should hit a thousand people by the end of this month. Um, the more time goes on, the faster it's growing. But, but again, it's uh, I probably decline at least at least as many people coming into the group as we accept. So we are growing slower, but we want that high high intent. One of the questions we ask a lot of people don't like doing this. They they feel like it's too. Um, it's too much right off the bat, but I ask for emails. Yeah, I do it for a few reasons. Number one, it helps me build a good database, which mm -hmm. creates an exit lever for the time and attention I'm putting into this. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, everybody has a burner email. I guarantee you have a burner email. I probably have three different burner emails. I know that's probably what I'm getting is that burner email mm -hmm. and that's okay. But if you're not willing to even give me your burner email, then all you're willing, all you're going to do in this group is take and take and take and take and probably spam the other members of my group. I, I don't want it. So it grows slower, but because of that, uh, because the intent is there, we have so much more um, engagement. And then when it comes to, you know, kind of fulfilling my cause at, or my end of day, what I'm trying to get to, uh, which is cultivating some coaching clients, our conversion rates are phenomenal. A typical conversion rate out of an open group it's not even 1%. It wouldn't even be at, at one one thousandth of a percent. You could have, like you say, a uh, hundred thousand people and you might convert, you might convert one person a month. Yeah. Uh, we convert at a much higher rate because the people that are there want to be there. They want to consume the content and they want to put their own content out as well. Yeah. 100%. I hope everybody here wrote down, ask for people's emails before they get into your group. I, I, I'm a huge believer in that. And you might think, well, well, here's, here's, I love what you said earlier about like the burner email and things like that, or not giving an email and, and the people who are not giving the email are the ones who are probably going to spam your group anyway. So, so it's like, why are they afraid to give your email? It's because spam, well, it's not necessarily the spam they've gotten. It's the spam they've sent. So it's one of those where you've got to ask for an email. We ask for email. Nobody gets in without an email. And and what's interesting about that, and, and maybe uh, I suck at this, but it's like we don't do a lot with those emails, right? We, we do have them in our database, but we aren't killing that with offers every week or every month or whatever. You know, they may get some type of update email from us, like words of wisdom, Wednesdays, wows, things like that. But... It's one of those where, you know, I also, when I get that email, I do see it as a form of trust and I never want to belie that trust, right? right? So I hope everybody wrote down that email should be one of the questions that are on the filter of your of your Facebook group. Can I throw a plug in here too, yeah. actually for a program um, that's yeah. going to make your life so much easier? Because all those emails, you need to be caching them, not just approving it because they wrote their email. And it can be tedious every single time, especially as your group starts growing and you have 10, 20, 30 people a day you're approving to take name and email and everything and throw it into your CRM or your database. There's a program out there. It's like 300 bucks for a lifetime membership. A friend of mine actually built this. It's called Group Funnels. It's a okay. plugin. And Group Funnels, once you buy it, you can integrate your CRM to, uh, to your Facebook. And when you go and approve those, it automatically puts them in your CRM for you right out of Facebook. Super simple, super easy. Um, and it's going to save you a ton of time, but it's one thing to ask for it. It's another thing, like you say, what are you going to do when you get it? And that's going to save you a ton of time and make sure you don't have things fall through the cracks either. I think we've been entering them manually. <laughs> I, 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 I do know that we had a system that was doing it mm -hmm. when we had Infusionsoft and we were using some type of, uh, Oh, uh, what we, I think we were zapping it in some way. There was a connector that was allowed and then somehow it got disconnected and it was just like, Oh my God, let's just, let's just enter it. And, uh, I can't wait to check out group funnels. I, I'll be interested to know if our social media team is using group funnels 
So I remember they about talking in, about this in a group where they're like, hey, I think we, we got the email, uh, email thing solved. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, that shows how much of an idiot I am. I don't even ask the questions. I just like, oh, okay, good. You got it solved. Let's go. If you got you know? a good team, let them do that. <laughs> exactly. So, all right. So how did you grow it in the beginning? You know, I mean, we're talking, you know, it's like having a retail store in the desert when you start. But how do you start getting the word about this retail center, let's call it, right? The Facebook group. How did you get the word out about the Facebook group in the beginning? Yeah, so kind of twofold. Number one, the, the most organic growth is the fact that I've been coaching and speaking, not just in front of small groups of, of 10 agents, but I've been speaking in front of national insurance carriers for years now at their events. And so I've, I've got some good contacts built up there and a good database of people that are in the business that know me. And so I went and invited each one of them to there and, and just told them, look, hey, maybe this turns into nothing. Maybe it turns into something, but I'm looking, I, I have this free place. I want you to come join me and I'm going to give out 100% of all my best shit up front, everything. And that that's what this group is for. I want you to come. And once they come in the beginning, it's going to take a little more time. You got to start posting content and you have to be consistent. Once you're consistent for two weeks, three weeks, a month. Now you can start asking them, hey, are you enjoying this? And they're always going to say yes, if you've done it right. When they say that, great, I need you to go grab two more people that aren't in this group. I need you to. You've never let, and, and I like to come to them with the language of, hey, I'm going to ask you because you've never let me down before. I know you're not going to let me down this time. I need you to come grab two more people and bring them in the group. So that's the first way. And um, it's very organic. Just start with your the database people you already have and, and you know. Uh, and it might be 10, it might be 10,000. I don't know, but that's where you start. The second thing that we've done, and uh, it wasn't just me, I've got my whole team doing this. Everybody on my team is doing this. Every single day when we log in, we have a social media blitz, but it's not a blitz of spam. It's a blitz of, hey, we already know we're putting the content out that insurance agents and financial advisors like to consume. So we're going to go friend request them. When, when you get on Facebook, you can search for people and set parameters. And we just look for insurance. If you have insurance in your job posting, you're going to get a friend request. We don't need a thousand a day, five a day from each team member. And as soon as they become a friend, now we're going to shoot them an invite to this group. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised. It, it's like an 80% approval rate or acceptance rate within, within 48 hours. Within two days, they accept that invite and they come over to the group. Brilliant. I love that. And what a great strategy. I'm, I'm just instantly thinking like, how can I provide value for the people in, in the group that we like creating Facebook groups was such a big deal for us, Carson, when, when the epidemic hit, right. And March 13th, basically on March 29th, we launched on this show, something called the daily dose. And it was literally every day we were going to interview somebody who was positive and productive. And the, right from the beginning, I said, there's two things that you got to do during this time of quarantine. One is I told them to fill out a VIP form for all their clients and for all the people they know. And a VIP form is just all the all their favorites, right? So what's your favorite color? What's your favorite drink? What's your favorite restaurant? What's your favorite sports teams? So it's just a VIP form that's kind of database entry. The other thing that we said you got to do is create a Facebook group. And it's like, you got to create a Facebook group. And then I love what you said about going to other Facebook groups and doing searches and inviting people from those other groups to your group. And there's one little key here is that it's like, it's, it's free. It's not like you're selling that. It's not like spam. Right. Right. It's, it's literally, you're, you're just letting them know that you've got this place where it's for life insurance agents. And that's a pretty small niche. There's not a lot of things out there for life insurance agents. So I love, I love what you're doing. Like a realtor, what they could do is go to the local moms group and say, Hey, listen, I've got this group that's specifically for Roswell. It's for moms and dads, but we'd love to have you in this group, you know, and, and we're going to share a lot of great the local events, that kind of thing. Right. So, and I think that one of the big keys I really want to touch on here is, is that 
on your personal page and your group, they need to, because when you invite someone to a group, if they don't know you, they're going to come look at your personal page. The content needs to be there and you need to be putting all your best stuff out up front. You don't need to organize it. You, you don't need to grant access to your time or attention, right? That can all exist behind a paywall. Or if you're a realtor, they come to you with a pre-qualification or something before they get your time and attention. But all your best information, all your best value needs to exist on your personal page and it needs to exist in your groups. Because the second they look and you've just got a whole bunch of, you know, off the wall stuff over here and you're telling them you have value in this group, they're not going to join it. Right. It needs to be um, a mirror Consistent, image. aligned, yeah. right? It has to be. I love that. I mean, I, I, I mean, Carson, we're, we're, we're halfway through this and I've already taken a page of notes, right? I mean, it's, this is such great stuff. The release of 7L in 2010 sparked a movement among business owners, industry changing catalyst coaching, referrals podcast, and annual summits were created as a result. And now we're excited to introduce the Referral Mastery Academy, the online university for everyone in Gen Gen. When on the Academy campus, head over to the library, get your library card and browse all of our free resources. Everything at the library is free. Or you can enroll as a student and have access to the library plus all of our on-demand courses where you can learn and implement at your own pace. Buy one course at a time. Finally, you have the option to go all in and join the Academy. Academy members get access to all of the on-demand courses, the library, and monthly live classes and challenges. Academy members pay $99 per month and have access to everything. Check it out today at referralmasteryacademy.com. I love how you're talking about Grow My Peeps and, and that it was a free place where I'm going to share all my best stuff. That is a genius line. I mean, for for the realtors who are doing this for the consumers, you know, Holiday Lights, you know, Holiday Lights Tour. What, what are the addresses? What are the homes out there that have the greatest light shows and letting them know? You know, what parks are having events, you know, that maybe, you know, you can be better at getting the word out than the, the county or the city and you know in many of our cases we have it where the mayor of the city has actually joined some of our uh realtors consumer groups because that group is a faster way to communicate things than any other way that the city has to get it out think about that you know how powerful that is and then you were talking about you know how can i give uninhibited value that shows I'm authentic and, and it can guarantee that, you know, the value is going to be there. What do you, what did you mean by uninhibited? Uh, what I mean is two things. Number one, like I said, is the concept of I'm going to give out all my best stuff for free all up front. I'm not going to organize it. I'm not going to grant these people in this group access to my time or attention that exists behind a paywall in my coaching program. And I need to protect that. But every single day, I'm going to take 20 minutes of my time and I'm going to put out a post and I'm not going to make some some um, crappy ass post, for lack of a better term, about yeah. how there are tricks in the business that you can do, but you got to contact me for these tricks. No, That's I'm right. going to give you the damn tricks. Yeah, yeah. You're right? not you're not going to do uh, clickbait, right? Right. So, yeah. So yeah. It, it's not it doesn't need to lead to anywhere. I want them to be able to read any post that I put up or watch any live video I put up and go implement that. And they are better for it. They don't you need know. to do anything else, but consume that and implement and they're better for it. So that's the first thing. The second thing is authenticity. Um, and I think this exists in a lot of industries, certainly in the financial sectors, which insurance is a part of that. Um, I think to, in today's day and age, everybody's just sick and tired of pretensions of uh, stuff stuffed up douchebaggery they're just tired of it they want you to be real they want you to be who you are and you know michael i'd asked you before we started hey this is your platform i want to respect it so if you have some rules please let me know but my group is my platform mm -hmm. and when i'm in my group i am going to be absolutely uninhibited i am going to say what i want do what i want say it how i want if that includes curse words if that includes weird one-off analogies or whatever yeah. the case may be that's part of who I am. And 
8 billion people on the planet, there's going to be a significant portion who connect to the way I talk, the way I act, the way I feel. Those are my number one customers. I don't even have to sell them. They're, they're begging me to come and join me at higher levels because of who and how I am. Love it. I love it. And so I, I heard, are you posting every day? I, I this is kind of like, what kind of content are you providing in your group? And one of the things I heard was that you post every day. You take 10 to 15 minutes to construct a post. Do you post every day? And what else do you do to, to kind of, you know, content do you do to engage the group? Yeah, so um, I actually spend almost two hours per day now posting because I don't just have my groups. I actually help admin quite a few other groups. So if we were to total up the members of groups that that I admin, it's currently close to a million people Jeez. that we're putting content in front of. And so as a part of that, I post to each group every day. I post my personal profile every day. And then we look at just the algorithms, right? So Facebook, um, particularly Instagram, um, LinkedIn is the same. They use a process called edge rank mm -hmm. to decide how they're going to put content in front of people. Yeah. And so I want to make sure that I'm using each platform appropriately when it's Facebook, Facebook wants long form content. I know we think people don't read posts, but when it's 6 AM and you're laying in bed and you can't sleep, but your wife is still sleeping, you're not going to play the videos. You read the long form content more often than not. If you play a video, you read the captions. Right. So long form content actually does really, really well. And Facebook is more likely to put that in front of somebody than some little two, you know, two word thing or, or a, a GIF or whatever. Instagram, on the other hand, people go to Instagram to consume pictures and videos. And so those get ranked higher. So first I pay attention to that. Then I say, OK, how can I make an impact today? Did I have a conversation the other day that led to a thought process that I can help somebody with? Did I have. Did something happen in my past that led me to here now that I can share with people? I can educate and entertain them with a story and find something to teach on based on that. There's days that I'm burned out because I'm posting 16, 20 posts a day between all these groups Jeez. and my personal page, and I have nothing left in the tank, mm -hmm. right? So what do I do in, in those times? In those times, I'll go make a, a meme. You can download I have an app. I think I pay a dollar a month for it call, called uh, Meme-O-Matic or something like that. Um, and I'll just make a meme that I find is is funny. Um, you know, the, the other day, a couple, I guess it was a couple months ago now, I had nothing to say, but I knew I needed a post because I need to be in front of my people every day and I need to be creating content. And um, I was just like, hey, if your mortgage lenders aren't getting back to you on, uh, you know, starting to send referrals to you for mortgage protection, life insurance, shoot this meme over to them. And all it was, was a meme. This guy's jumping through the air and there's this big German shepherd that's like five inches away from biting the dude in the junk. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's captioned. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but something to the effect of what buying a home and having a mortgage without mortgage protection, life insurance really looks like. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so it just, it's like, have fun with it, do whatever, but, but you should all your posts, whether you are posting long form content, doing a live video. And I would always go live as opposed to recording a video and then posting it. Facebook wants to see your engagement mm -hmm. and their job is to keep people on the platform to sell ads, right? People pay more attention to lives. They engage more with lives. They engage more with long form content. So that's where edge rank. That's what edge rank does is it's all, how do we keep people on the platform more? Um, but, but like I say, the whole idea is just post, be consistent, have a consistent message and, um, and, and don't take time off from it. I do, I don't really post on weekends, but you can guarantee, um, that you can catch me on my channel. Think of it like a TV channel, Michael, right? right? Your, your, your personal page is your TV channel. Your group is also your TV channel. And if, if you're not posting content on there, why the hell would you expect anyone else to? Right. It's like the channel is uh, dead air, right? Exactly. So I make sure we constantly have stuff going up and people know they can tune in Monday to Friday and get new stuff. And now we're big enough and we have enough going on that we're guaranteed to have a handful of posts every Saturday, every Sunday from other people as well. Not just me. I take that time and, and give it to my family and let my brain take a break. So I love that. I love that. And uh, you, you dropped the nugget there with Meme-O-Matic. I'm, I'm definitely going to check that out. And I can't wait to 
see what see what I can do with that. That'll be a lot of fun. And then, you know, you, you brought up a really good point that I think anybody that has a Facebook group should internalize. And, and I know that the biggest, most well-run groups don't even do this, is the Facebook Live. You know, doing regular Facebook Lives, if you're a realtor, you could do an interview with a local business on Facebook Live. You'd literally do it from your phone. You know, you can do these by Zoom and then just uh, share it on in your Facebook group. And it's very easy to do that. Very easy uh, to just plug it in. So I love the thought of, of doing just a Facebook Live where you're at a local event and you just share, hey, listen, you know, this is running until seven o'clock tonight. Come on down and I'll buy your popcorn, right? Or whatever it may be. And maybe nobody takes you up on it, but it's cool and it shows generosity. And there might be people who didn't even know about it who can check it out. So uh, that is a, a great little nugget there with Facebook Live. And the Facebook Live is going to trigger a higher edge rank, especially as the views get, as it gets shared and the views go up. The other thing that I love about that is that, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, I'm sure you have, but have you noticed that just like Ed Drank and Facebook just love groups yes. over everything else? I mean, literally now Reels, I would say Reels has, 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 has taken a little bit of leadership over groups at this point, but it is amazing how much what you see is really what was posted in a group versus what your friends posted, you know? Right. Keep in mind, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, they don't make money by having a user base. They make money selling ad space, right? right? To sell ad space, you have to be on there. And this is actually why Facebook is so worried about TikTok because Facebook's average per user time is 23 minutes. TikTok, and they have been for the decade, the last decade, leading everybody, by the way. TikTok now, you, so you mentioned Reels. Reels came about because of TikTok. That's right. Uh, that was and, their and TikTok's average user time. Every time you log on, it's like 51 minutes. Jeez. Right. But the idea is what are we putting in front of people that the data says keeps them on our platform the longest so we can run the most ads at them. And the reality is, is if you have a group that you're in, you pay attention to, that's your highest, that's your highest intent content you're consuming on Facebook. It's going to keep you there the longest. You're going to engage with it the most. Thereby, therefore, you are going to see the most ads. You won't see ads in the group. Facebook groups don't have ads in them yet, but you're going to see ads in the side panels. And if you flash over to your, your news feed, you're going to see ads. It's all about keeping you on there. And so if groups are what you consume the most, which is actually most people, right? That's what they want to put in front of you more than anything. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And uh, just, I mean, there are people, believe it or not, Carson, who are watching or listening to this that still have not created a Facebook group. I, I, it's like, what else do you need to hear to know that you should create a Facebook group, even if it's 10 people, even if it's 100 people, even if it's 500 people? It's not about the size. It's about the quality. And it's about the, the commonality as much as anything of, of the people in your group. I love that. All right, so kind of just uh, the, the wrap up, you know, what are the top three things that a business owner must do to create and keep their group relevant? Or th what are three words of wisdom, you know, so to speak, three tips uh, for somebody who wants to make their Facebook group super engaging and maybe even get a chance to monetize it? Um, number one is consistent content and don't ever sell your shit in the group. The minute you do that, you turned everybody off where you're selling your stuff. People are smart. And, and with one flick of a thumb, right, they can go from the content they're consuming of yours that they love to your personal page and see what it is you do like that. You don't need to sell your stuff in your group, right? They're going to get interested in who you are and what you do all on their own. It's, it's amazing how it happens. So where are you going to sell your stuff? Probably in the comments to somebody else's post in your group, or they're going to have a question. You're going to say, Hey, I don't want to, you know, blow my group up or blow this group up with some, some bullshit or whatever. So why don't we slide over to the DMS and let's talk in, in a private chat and see what I can do to help you. Right. But that, so keep the, the crap out of your group and be consistent with content. That would be 
um, probably the number one biggest thing. Uh, second tip, and and maybe not necessarily in this order, mm-hmm. is, um, and I guess this is probably the first step. Make the decision to start a damn group. Yeah, amen. Like you said, some are small. I have one group that has under a hundred people in it, and I make a sell out of that group every single month. It's a super high intent group, super high intent group. It's super small, very very intimate. We have great conversations in there. Um, and I do almost nothing po- posting in that group every single day is it's like breathing. It's, it's so simple as far as what the content in that one needs, but that sell each month, it's, it's a four figure sell anywhere from a thousand to $5,000 every single month for 30 seconds of my day. <laughs> Why would I not? Yeah. So and not and you enjoy it. Point. I mean, that's the thing that, that I, I think that we can't, if, if you're just creating a group to create a group, I would say don't create the group. If you're creating a tribe of trust, that is going to be a bunch of people that you like and that like you and that are like you in one form. Maybe you love roller coasters and you create a roller coaster aficionado group or whatever it may be. Maybe you love wine and you create a wine group, whatever it may be. But that's the beauty of what you're just saying is that posting in that group with a hundred is like breathing. And it, it's like, what? it's that easy. It's that, I enjoy those people. So I like conversing with them on a daily basis. It's not like it's work, though it does pay the bills too, which is the foundation of the generosity generation with love, generosity, and appreciation. So it's like, I love that. That's fantastic. That's such good advice. Yeah. How about number three? Number three would just be when you're deciding what to make your group about, come from and i think you already hit on it something you actually care about Mm -hmm. right because your intent has to be regardless of a paycheck you are going to edify and improve people's lives because they're in your group you are going to just give value and i'm going to tell you if you don't enjoy it if you don't love it and you don't have a damn thing to say about it you shouldn't have a group about it it's wasted time and energy right? right so pour into your groups your group should be something that you could rant about you rant about already to your friends now instead of ranting over a hamburger at a barbecue rant on your group rant through your group it's like we said it's like breathing you're already doing it you're just not doing it in the right place Mm. i i have to tell you so a question popped into my head are you time blocking the time for posting or do you post spontaneously and randomly it's a great question. And the answer is I time block my time. It, it's kind of a hybrid. I time block my time for all my posts. Um, I sit down, I turn everything off and I get it done. Additionally, um, Facebook, for example, um, I don't use Facebook on my, on my phone unless I'm doing a live video. Uh, I always do it from my desktop. I use a, a program called Newsfeed Killer. It's a free Google plugin and it kills my newsfeed. So I have nothing to scroll through. I get on, I do my business in my groups and I get off. Wow. Right. So I use that. I do post throughout the day, um, but typically those posts throughout the day are actually to Instagram okay. and I have my Instagram set up to share it to Facebook and they will be the random snippets. I just had a great meal over here. I just did that. You know, my little kid just did something really cool here. That's what I'm just real random about. But my, my content, I want people to consume. It's time blocked every morning. I bang it out first thing. Now I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the day. Um, and it's, it's done and done and buttoned up. I, I, I tell you full page of notes, like even in the corners, the crannies and the, and the, and the margins here and, uh, just so much good. I, I, I love the little tidbits that you shared about meme matic Facebook live group funnels and news feed killer. I mean, those, those are, those are little things that, that are huge technology leverages that everybody here should check out. I absolutely love those. And uh, I'll tell you what, start a group, start a group about something you care about and don't start a group to sell people. People are going to buy from you. You don't need to sell. And it's one of those where I absolutely love that. And then make it a group that's so fun and so you know lovable that you know what, you want to post on a regular basis and you want to feed the value. And, and I have to say one other thing that, that it, it's like today is a great example is with a Facebook group, you don't have to be there to provide value. A lot of times the group members will provide value to the other group members, even 
if you aren't around. And, and in fact, some groups, that is all the value. Most, in fact, I would say Gen Gen, there's more value being provided member to member than from me to the members. I, and I say that in all humble, you know, humility and, and truthfulness, but you know, what I love is like what we got here today. You and I met through a Facebook group. And even though that person who created the group doesn't even know they provided value, they provided the value of connecting us today, which led to you providing an absolute ton of value to Jen Jen and the referrals podcast. And, and I, I think that just that there's a valuable lesson there uh, on all of this, on all of this Facebook group stuff that, you know what, you got to get one going and you got to feed it every day and it will feed you in the long run. It'll feed you and all. I know you want to wrap it up here just to surmise something that, that you said, understand the point of your group is not to sell to people. It's absolutely not. People are already going to buy from who they know, like, and trust. The point of your group is to become the person that they know, like, and trust. That's it. Boom. There it is. Uh, that, that's a, that's a powerful drop the mic moment. And it's one of those of several that we've gotten here today from Carson. Carson, I really appreciate you coming on and being a guest of referrals podcast. Yeah, man. I appreciate the opportunity and the platform to spread the good word. 100% ladies and gentlemen, I know, I know we could have gone another hour or two or three days with Carson on this content, but you know what? I know you got to end your walk soon. You got to get off the treadmill soon. You got to get off the stationary bike pretty soon and go get some work done. Hopefully part of that work is either feeding your Facebook group or starting your Facebook group because today there's no longer any excuses. All the limiting beliefs you had about Facebook groups are gone. You can make it happen. And I'm telling you, this was a fantastic referrals podcast episode. If you liked it, please rate it and review it. Please share it. We'd love more people listening in on referrals podcast. We, we love more members of Gen Gen. Uh, we're looking for the sharers and the carers out there and uh, people just like you. So if you know someone, bring a friend, let them know about it, share them, maybe share it on Facebook even, or share it in your Facebook group. So the bottom line is we love providing this content. You, the listeners have made us a top hundred podcast in marketing in the world. And we love you for that. We appreciate it. You come back every single week. And uh, we love you for it. Referrals Podcast, Jen Jen, love you. We'll see you next time on Referrals Podcast. Mm-hmm.